And like Nissan Black was, he was one of the people like pounding at my door, like, why are you doing this corporate American thing? Like, just scream to Hashem and get out of this. Welcome to the pod. Yeah, that's what he said to me. He was like, I thought he was crazy. You know, I can't, they're paying me every month for six so, you know, so whole It's a job. <laughs> yeah, I have a job. I'm, I'm near my house. I can do it. I was online. And, you know, once in a while I have to go to the office in Beit Shemesh, not in the end of the world, and there's a Dafyomi there and a, a Mincha, and, you know, there is some Ruchnius in these places, you know, and, and meeting other Jews and working together with other people as well, not just Jews. I often was training a whole crew in Vegas as well, you know, non-Jewish people, and I really connected with them. It was really good fun talking to them and sharing my stories, their stories. It was, you know, there's always opportunities wherever you go, wherever you work for, and wherever you end up. But Nissan was like, you got to scream, man. You got to like get to that next level of like doing your mission. And like you were saying, being involved with work, but getting paid, but for your mission, for spirituality, mm -hmm. for, for a larger picture and things. What I would say is practically as much as that was helpful when Nissan said, and I did scream and it did work, you know, I literally, I remember I was in my own office. I rented my own space. I could scream as much as I want, <laughs> as long as the neighbors didn't knock on the door. And, and screaming to Hashem works, you know, that's what we know from, from when we go out in Israel, we'll scream out, you know, and say tonight, please God, coming up. While in the Torah, we're going to say, Saka, we're going to scream, and we should scream. That's what the, the, the Hasidah, the, the Sadi can bring down. It's just that night, it's a very important night to scream out to Hashem. Yeah, it's Hashem will answer all your prayers, as you said before. You have to, there's certain times of will. So you really have to put in that work and the prayer. And Rav Oresh, for example, with his photos, the hours of his photos. Um, for me, I'm not so like, I'm not holding on that six hours and all that. Um, but from where I'm holding, I'd say on a practical level, there's the idea of also building our own brand. And that, that would connect into all the podcast people I mentioned before, Tom Bilyeu and Lewis Howes and these successful people, even... You know, there's there's one cool um, from from a lady. Um, she made her own podcast. Um, I've forgotten her name. I always forget her name for some reason. But if not now, then when? And she got it from Pick Elvis. You know, <laughs> that's how she named her podcast. Yeah. So and she's very successful. That lady. And then then for example, uh, who else was I was thinking? Of? Someone else came in my mind. Oh, Rich Roll. There's a lot of podcasts out there. I don't agree with everything they say, but there's a Nakuda that you're asking on that all these people are, were empowered to build their own brand and to leave the corporate structures and become in a way their own self-employed boss. Like I always have that thing in my head. Should I remain self-employed? Like this year hasn't been such a big moneymaker in the self-employed world because, you know, the, the booking industry has been, you know, mostly online and it hasn't been what it was. So I have to still pay an account and I still have to have my own self-employed account and do all that. But, what I, my wife and myself, we always discuss it and say, yeah, because we're leaving the door open for blessing. We're, we're creating room for our own abilities to, to provide a, a vessel for our own, own message and our own unique purpose in this world. And it's, so to believe in yourself, to believe that you, this podcast is not just, you know, just a fun side project. This is part of your journey to build your brand. 